This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm Latoya Burroughs. Coming up in this week's broadcast, church makes impact in historical village and a COVID-19 vaccination. Should we take it? These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. In the 1830s, Adelaide Village was one of the settlements dedicated to free blacks after the abolition of the slave trade in 1807. The tiny town was a sanctuary for many ex-slaves, providing the opportunity to start a new life. Today, you can still find memorials of its vivid past. More than two decades ago, the late elder Eric Bain from the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church sensed the call to establish the presence of a Seventh-day Adventist congregation in Adelaide. And today, the third angel's message is alive and well in this historical community. Exodus 25, 8 says, Let them build me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. Under the leadership of Pastor Larry Green, supported by the officers and members, a physical edifice is being erected to serve as a worship and community center. When the structure is completed, it will be used to execute ministry initiatives, including vocational training, intergenerational mentoring initiatives, relationship booth camps, the Pathfinder and Adventure program, worship and inspirational services, and more. Additional features are recreational and meditation areas in nature ponds, gazebo, walking and exercise tracks, and outdoor camping areas. Their worship center is being designed to seat up to 250 persons with a dedicated foyer, a welcome center providing an excellent atmosphere for fellowship. The worship and community center are nearing completion and the small congregation is grateful to the conference administration, the Adventist men of the Hillview and Grantstown churches, several other individuals who came to the work site and rendered assistance over the months. Pastor Green also expresses his appreciation to their sister churches and various individual donors for their financial support and encourages others on any given Sunday to lend a hand. Persons, businesses, and organizations who would like to contribute to this worthy project, you can make a direct deposit to Royal Bank of Canada, Adelaide Seventh-day Adventist Church at the account number on the screen. Or you can make your checks payable to the Adelaide Seventh-day Adventist Church or feel free to drop off your donations at the South Bahamas Conference Headquarters on Tonic Williams Darling Highway. For further details as to how you can assist, please contact any of these individuals listed below. That's Pastor Larry Green, the District Pastor, Inez Bullard, the Treasurer, or call the South Bahamas Conference Headquarters and inquire. A webinar was held recently by the New Engliston Church to enlighten its members and community on the vaccinations available in regard to the COVID-19 virus. Dr. Paul Toon, emergency care physician from Texas in the United States, shared his expertise from his encounters of treating persons who have presented with the coronavirus. Dr. Toon spoke on the related symptoms of the virus. There is a pre-symptomatic phase of anywhere from about two to 14 days. So what that means is that you can be exposed to COVID and be infected with COVID. Now, I'm sorry, coronavirus, COVID is the disease. So you can be exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 and you can be infected by the SARS-CoV-2 and still not have the symptoms of COVID because COVID is this disease. So if you have this, this thing, you can be walking around fine, doing fine, feeling good, and then develop your symptoms. Typically anywhere from about five days or so you would start, if you were exposed, you'd get symptomatic. So now what are some of the symptoms that you can have? The symptoms are so varied 
And the symptoms are varied because the virus affects all of our symptoms, all of our systems in our body. So you can have anywhere from diarrhea, you can have a sore throat, you can have a cough, you can have shortness of breath, you can have fever, you can have ultimate status. These are some of the things. Now, of course, they don't, all of them aren't at the same level of frequency. Most of us are aware of people having COVID being short of breath. That is a familiar one. Most of us know that people have having COVID may be having cough or have a fever. But a lot of people don't realize that because of the receptors, and I'm going to get a little geeky here, Dr. Pastor Williams, so bear with me. The receptors that the coronavirus attaches to are called the ACE2 receptors. These receptors are throughout our body, predominantly in the stomach, as well as in the lungs. They're also in our blood vessels. So because they are so ubiquitous throughout the body, COVID-19 can attach to any of those and affect any of those. And by doing so, your symptoms can be varied. And that is what makes COVID-19 so tricky to healthcare providers, because you may come in with a complaint that is not necessarily specific and be that. That's why we rely on testing. Obviously, now we know that common things are common. And if someone just has a, a, a sniffle or runny nose, if you weren't exposed or you weren't in a place where um, COVID-19 is highly um, transmitted or you think there's a high chance you've been exposed to it, you don't need to say, oh, I think I got COVID, right? But if your symptoms persist and you start to have these things, please go to your healthcare provider and be tested because we understand that by the time you have the symptoms, it is a great chance that you might have spread it already. So that is why we want to really be careful. And that's why social distancing is so important. Mask wearing is so important. Washing of hands is so important. The audience engaged Dr. Toot by asking questions on the vaccination. One such question was whether persons who follow healthy lifestyles were exempt from taking the vaccination. For all of those who are familiar with the news, just take a look at India. Take a look at Brazil, and you see thousands of people passing away. And I would hasten to say that if someone was to study those thousands of people, we would find someone in there that is healthy and that is following a, the plant-based diet or is uh, not smoking and drinking and doing all these things that has to come to COVID. So until we can find more and understand this more, I say, yes, be healthy, live the healthy life. But in the same vein, don't deny the science. God has given us knowledge. He has given us science as one of his tools. And we need to pay just as much attention to that as we pay to the other health laws. Are persons who are vaccinated still able to contract the virus? So let's say you got the first dose of the vaccine. And that's typically when we see it. So you get the first dose of the vaccine and then Lo and behold, you have symptoms and you go checked out and they said you're COVID positive. Well, the vaccine didn't give you COVID. Okay, there are two scenarios that occurred. The first is either you um, had COVID. Remember, we talked about being asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic, correct? We don't test you before we give you the vaccine. We just ask you a questionnaire. Are you having fever, any chills, any runny nose? Have you been exposed to COVID? Are you having any increased fatigue? And we go through this questionnaire, correct? Once we go through that questionnaire, we say, okay, whether or not you're safe to get the vaccine. Some of those people we know, a few of them will pass the questionnaire, but already have been exposed to COVID-19. And it's just in the pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic stage. You with me? So then after receiving the first dose, lo and behold, they come down with COVID because they had it before the vaccine was given to them. Does that make sense? So, so now that's one scenario. The other scenario is the same thing can happen after you receive the second vaccine because that first dose is a primer and is not the optimal amount. And if you look at the studies that tell you that after the first dose of some of these vaccines, you can be anywhere from 60 to 80% protected, okay? But after the second dose, you should get into those 90% numbers and 70 and 80% numbers that we've been hearing about. So after the second dose, you could still come down with, with COVID. Why is that? Because we all have different responses. All over the world, persons are concerned about the side effects of getting vaccinated. Dr. Toot had this to say. As far as the blood clot, let's deal with that issue. That's in the news. Everybody's in vogue about it. So AstraZeneca, 
first reported in Europe that they had a few cases of blood clots. So what they did is they saw that 80 people or so got, uh, got these blood clots, AstraZeneca. So they wanted to look at it and see what was going on. Now, when they looked at this, and I, I, I'm sorry for looking at the page, I wrote down some numbers. Um, so they saw that there was uh, four in a million, basically. Four people in one million end up having a blood clot from AstraZeneca, okay? When all the numbers are said and done. AstraZeneca had given millions and millions of these uh, vaccines, and they saw this amount of people who came down with the, this, this condition. Now, there's a certain profile that these people have. So it's not just any, I, I think in the AstraZeneca, they looked at multiple blood clots. So you had blood clots in sometimes in the vessels in the stomach. You had blood clots uh, in the brain and heart, different places where you had blood clots. So AstraZeneca vaccine, four in one million equals 0.004% chance of getting a blood clot from receiving the vaccine. 0.0004. I read somewhere that you have a chance of one in, in 200,000 of being struck by lightning. So that means you can get struck by lightning two or three times on your way to get the vaccine before you get a blood clot from the vaccine. <laughs> I know that's a little humor there, but I just want to put it in perspective. People are, uh, are being frightened and wait till you hear the, the risk of you getting a blood clot from other conditions. If you take birth control pills, you have an increased risk of getting blood clots. That chance is 500 to 1.2 thousand per million. That's a 0.05 to 0.012% chance. So people who take birth control pills, they do it all the time, no big deal. And yet there's a chance of blood clot. They don't freak out and say, I don't want my birth control pill. People who smoke, I know we're talking to an audience who don't believe in smoking, but we're using it for contextual reasons, okay? So people who smoke has a one 1,763 chance in a million. 1,763 people who smoke in 1 million will get a blood clot. That's a 0.18% chance of a blood clot. Dr. Tooth encouraged the virtual audience to get information for themselves and to do what is in the best interest of them and their families to keep everyone safe. We'll be back with the upcoming events in our conference. Welcome back to your Adventist News. Here's what's coming up in the South Bahamas Conference. What do you have planned for your mother this Sunday? Looking for a place to spend a little quality time with her? The Good News Seventh-day Adventist Church will sponsor a free Mother's Day concert in the parking lot of the church on Sunday, May 9th, 2021 at 6 p.m featuring the Brothers Love Gospel Band, the Good News Praise Team, along with other guest artists. The concert will be a drive-in event. All participants will be asked to remain in their cars. Bathroom facilities will be available and a love offering will be collected. You are invited to join the Good News Church family at the place where the news is always good. Under the theme, Preparing for Effective Ministry Post-COVID-19, the Ministerial Department of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists presents SOAR 2021. You are encouraged not to wait until the pandemic has passed to discuss the way forward for your congregation. Attend SOAR and gain knowledge from churches that are already creating the template for ministry post-COVID-19. The new dates for SOAR is May 14th through the 16th, 2021. To see a list of the subjects and presenters for this year's program, log on to the conference website and click the SOAR link. World Adventure Day, hosted by the Youth Department in conjunction with the Podfinders Club, will be held on May 15th. During the morning hours, every local church is expected to have its adventurous lead out in the Sabbath school and divine worship programs. In the afternoon, a joint celebration for the adventurers will be held. Ignite 2021, which is the third annual Youth Retreat Congress, will be held under the theme Situationships, the 5S formula, in the month of May. 
on Friday, May 28th at 8 p.m. This event will be virtual only. And on Sabbath, May 29th, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. A hybrid service will be held both online and in person for paid delegates only at the New Providence Community Center. You can register to attend in person through your youth leaders. The youth ages 18 to 35 are asked to register by Sunday, May 16th. For more information on these events, please visit our conference website at www.southbahamasconference.org where you can view our news updates along with other programming from our cable channel ATV 658. Read the weekly logos and the Adventist page publication from the Nassar Guardian. The thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland found in the front of the neck. A healthy thyroid can be compared to a size that is a bit larger than that of a quarter. Its job is to produce a hormone which regulates growth and development via the rate of metabolism. According to Healthline.com, all cells in the body can be altered negatively if the thyroid is affected negatively. Iodine found in food is taken to the thyroid gland and then converted into thyroid hormones called thyroxine, T4, and triiodothyronine. The thyroid gland function is to allow your heart, brain, muscles, and other organs to work accurately, and it helps to manage your body's temperature. Men are not as likely to attain a thyroid problem as women are. One in eight women will contract a thyroid issue during her lifespan. In the body, thyroid cells are the only cells that can absorb iodine. Maintain a balanced diet and be sure to include foods rich in iodine such as prunes, dried seaweed, baked potato with the skin, cranberries, iodized sea salt, milk, navy beans, tuna, and organic yogurt. This has been Bridget Bastian with your health tips, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. As the last Soufriere volcano continues to spew ash, hot gas, and lava across St. Vincent, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, along with the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, and church member volunteers has begun providing food and clothing to hundreds who are staying in shelters across the island. More than 20,000 people have been displaced from their homes since the eruption began on April 9. President of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dermoth Baptiste, said, No one has escaped the assault of the volcano, for the entire country has been blanketed with dust, ash, and rubble. Scientists have reported that some areas have up to two feet high of ash. Ash has traveled as far as the neighboring islands of St. Lucia, Grenada, and Barbados. So far, Baptiste reported that 10 Adventist churches were directly affected, and hundreds of members and entire communities had to quickly evacuate the danger zones, many escaping with only the clothes on their backs. ADRA will assist in an initial one-month response to assist in preparing and distributing hot meals daily for 600 staying in shelters. That brings us to the end of our Adventist News for the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events by email to sbcadventistnews at gmail.com to view a rebroadcast of the Adventist News along with other programming or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference visit our conference website like, follow and subscribe to our Facebook and Instagram pages as well as our YouTube channel and on behalf of the production team of Adventist Television Channel 658, we thank you for watching our news broadcast. I'm Latoya Burrows for the SBC Media Network. Have a happy Sabbath. <music>